good sign. Now, whether they're available for tomorrow, we'll see when they come off here. But um, Cass looked like he was moving pretty good out there, and Nuge uh, wasn't in all the drills, but the ones he did, he looked all right out in there, so we'll see. It goes without saying when you're missing two guys like that, you're going to miss them, but is it more of a stabilizing presence if they can come into the lineup uh, in the short term? Well, you, they're, they're players that have played in our top six all year kind of thing, so they're, you miss both of them. Now, I still think we can play a good team game without them, but when you can add good players to your lineup, it makes your lineup better. Why wouldn't you want to have them? You know? David, that, that's, that's another loss against the so-called you know, lesser club in the, in the standings. Yeah. Do you think it's a case of maybe you guys, the cliche, playing down to their level, or is it maybe just you know teams are gunning for you because you're on top of the division? And there's a different mindset. I think maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. I, I, you know, I really like the way we play the first period. If you look at the first period, you think, hey, you guys played well, and then we come out and we give up the two quick goals, and then we decided to change our game and chase the game. And it just, um, for their team, they'd lost five in a row, and all of a sudden, boom, they get a little life, and they think they can win. Same thing happened to Detroit. That team was, you know, was kind of down, lost eight in a row, and they were desperate. And we didn't reach that desperation. The same thing with Chicago in there. You know, your team lost, hadn't won the, yet this year, and their desperation level was just higher than ours. So uh, we had a meeting this morning. We talked about like, how we played against Vancouver on Sunday night or went into Vegas or went into San Jose last time. We need to make that a staple of our game. It doesn't matter who we play or where they're at in the standings and because that's how we want to play. And, and we understand that. We just got to do it more. Why how long does it take? Why can't they? Uh, just we're working on it. We're just not sustaining it. You know, like there's there's, there's certain things that we do when we're playing well that uh, we get away from, and some of it, like you can see some frustration sometimes on players' face. They they uh, they get frustrated if things aren't going their way. We have to learn how to play through that frustration and stay with the game a little more. It's two one. Like I think we're going to score another goal in that game, right? Rather than give another two away. So. Instead of giving two away, stay with the game and stay working hard and stay simple and hard and see if we can find a way to get back in the game, not give the game away. So the defense pair of Clefbaum and, and, and Adam last night, was that just what a circumstance that they were on for, for four even strength or were they, did they just play poorly last night? Uh, there was some poor and there was some bad breaks. So, so you look at the fourth and the fifth goal. We turn it over, come back, and it, it's, uh, it's a nothing play. Duclair whiffs on it and goes across. The other guy shoots it wide, comes out the other side, right to Duclair standing on the other. He shoots it from behind the goal line. And, like, is that Clef's fault? Probably not. The one right? where they're both caught behind the net. But, well, how about that one? So the puck's going, Clef's going back for it, hits a little stanchion in the boards, jumps right back. Right? So that doesn't happen again. When I looked at it too, I said, where are you going, Clef? What are you doing? And then you watch it on tape, hit a little chunk of the boards, came right back, he overskated it, yeah. right? So we now he overskates it. Now Larson thinks he's got to cover up for him. The next guy covers up for him, and the next guy's open, right? So there's some of those things like, hey, can they play better? The, the one that bothered me the most was the one where they were on for over a minute, him and Larson. We came up, dry settle, turned it over, and Klepp was up sniffing on the play and couldn't get back, was too tired to get back on the two-on-one goal. Right, so uh, is there some things they can do to everyone to play better? Sure, there is. Everybody was in that position last night, but they got they got caught with a couple of minuses. They're uh, they're ones that I I think they're bad breaks more than bad minuses. In Adam's case, was Sekera when he got hurt and then came back when the season had already been going? For, how it's hard. You, you're a coach. How di di difficult is it for a player to catch up when he's when he's gone through camp, but <coughs> Yeah, but it's the catch up. Difficult it's diff It's more difficult when you haven't been in the season, you know, when you and you haven't had any time to get because training camp is one speed, and when you get in the regular speed, uh, season, it's another speed. He played part of one game, you know, and then the whole league is ramping up. So he's, he, I mean, it's we've tried to work him in as slow as we could, but now we've, you know, I thought he played pretty well in Vancouver the other night. So we pushed him back in. So he's got to keep, I mean, he's a good good pro, good veteran. He's got to keep doing things uh, to get up to speed. And Jimmy Playfair has been working with him a lot. And I know uh, Lars is like, he's, he's doing whatever he can, whether it's video or training or extra stuff in, in, uh, at practice to get him up, up and going. So.
He is, just he knows he's got to play better. Is it the thinking part of it or the skating part of it? I think it's all the above. All it's the as above. A get, you get, think. Getting up to speed. Getting up to speed where you're you're thinking quick enough and you're reacting quick enough and your uh, your body's playing quick enough. When, just to sort of get back what you said about some of the desperation and consistency, is is that more of a like a learned behavior or almost a mental thing? I mean, you got a team like Boston with three losses, Washington with five, and they're doing it year after year. Is that you got to get to that I point? Think where there's they an, I think there's a number of things. There's there's uh, the consistency and thinking and and staying with it. There's the depth of the roster. There's a lot of different factors that come into it. You know that. that veteran team has the ability to stay with it, has been through those battles before, and that's something we've got to continue to learn. Was there a physical or a psychological reason for keeping them off the ice today? Did you want to just give them up? Uh, we've got a plan for, plan for the week here. I don't like skating when we play every second day. Um, we want to have one full practice between, between games, not two full practices, right? So uh, if you look at our schedule yesterday, we practiced the full. Yesterday morning, we had just about everybody skate. Uh, today, we we're going to stay off. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a full skate. And then Saturday, because of the 6 o'clock game on Sunday, we'll have a full skate on Saturday. So there's, there's a method to the madness. And we had a good, we were a 30 game mark today. We had a good meeting, went through a bunch of stuff today. So it was, uh, it was a day of some rest and everybody else was in the gym. But there's lots being done behind the scenes, not just on the ice. How do you go about that process? Do you sit down at the start of the month? Start of the week, and who's all involved? In it? All the coaches, all the coaches, and we'll—I uh, mean, the training staff. Some of the the uh, sports science stuff goes into it. You know, to see where we're at, see where everybody's, where we get the. There's different readings that we get where the where the group is at. You know, and uh, fatigue level, and physical and mental fatigue level. So we uh, monitor all that stuff. But usually, the coaches sit down. We'll run it by a few guys and. In the meeting this morning, there was uh, we talked about some things that we want to try to accomplish, and this is this is the way we're going to do it. So, Dave, I think the players expect you to have a plan in place, and we do. If you have one defense pair that you're pretty much stuck with, we'd like obviously three. You could, eh? yeah. I mean, obviously Baron and Gers, they played together now pretty much the whole. Why do you think you stick with a pair? Pretty much have a good idea. Though. Okay. Yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. But so going into the season, though, you wanted. To you were thinking of Nurse, of Nurse and yeah. Larson playing together as a shutdown. Third yeah, right up, up, right up to that point where Bear has been really good. Okay. <laughs> so do you have a shutdown pair now then? Well, those guys, you know, really, I think we've got, you know, the top two pairs there are, are could certainly fall into that role. But Nurse and Bear have been, you know, they've been coming out of camp. If we would have known that Bear was going to play as many minutes or play as well as he had, you know, we probably would have been thinking different at the start of camp, but Bears just come in and played so well that he's kind of dictated some of that, and the pair's been pretty good. You know, and it's not just they play big minutes. There's uh, They play a shutdown role. They're, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we keep in behind the scenes. It's, they're, they're a good pair. So I'd like to leave them as one constant, and we're trying to find two other ones that, like you say, could be pretty good together. As Oscars played with the young guys. And now he's with Larson, so he really hasn't had a partner either all year. Yeah, yeah. Well, the we're working on that now, trying to find the right guy for him. I mean, it should be Larson, right? They played a lot together before, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Dave, knowing what you know about last night, how does the focus change for tomorrow's game against LA? What do you mean, what I know well, about last night? Well, you know that. Things didn't go the right way. The, you know, things went awry. Bad breaks and poor play. Do you have to change your focus for tomorrow night's game? Uh, I think every game you have a new focus going into every game. You know, you recognize what you did right and wrong for the last game. But we do a lot of stuff where we really gear it towards us, what we're going to do. So it's uh, there's areas that we got to improve, and there's areas in the game last night that we thought were good, and some that we got to have a strong look at and make sure we correct. So we'll go into tomorrow night's game. Think we're going to correct the things that we did poorly, you know. And then you look at LA. We played them twice already. You know, we beat them at home here, and they beat up on us uh, in LA. So we'll know a lot about them and what to expect. But you know, it's. I think our team will be ready to play tomorrow.